In this lecture, we will mainly talk about the causes of disease and the causal inference in epidemiology. One of the important roles for epidemiology is to try to identify the causes of disease or events. This is very important for health practitioners, especially for the health, public health professionals. The role that we understand about the cause of the disease, the more it will become possible to take measures to prevent uncontrolled disease in the population. So what kinds of study can we conduct to discover the cause of the disease? We have discussed several study methods, such as the analytic uh, epidemiological study, and the descriptive cohort studies, case control studies, and experimental studies. To measure the association between the exposure and the out outcome, we learned about the rate ratios, odds ratios, risk difference, etc. If there is an association between one factor and one disease or outcome, this factor might be the cause of the outcome. However, the situation seems much more complicated than the, we have expected. In this chapter, we will uh, discuss about this issue and uh, we will understand why they may find that the, sometimes the associations may disagree about each other and on whether a uh, relationship is a cause. Here is what is uh, about the content that we will learn in this uh, today's lecture. First, we will learn about the concepts and modes of the causes of disease. We will talk about the different types of uh, causal relationships and about the research methods to find out these causal relationships. We will, we will see about the methods of causal inference as well as the criteria for the judgment of causal inference. When we talk about the causal you have previously learned about it in the Bible or if someone has believed in the Buddhism, you may have understand that the for the disease effect in for the Christians, this effect is often subtle because the illness or poor, weak or wrong down state of health may not be the result of a specific thing. So in Christian it is understand that the disease may be the product of a series of things committed over many years or a lifetime. While in Buddhism, the foundation of the Buddhism is the law of cause and effect. The law of cause and effect is made up of very three essential guidelines that the good deeds bring the good result, the bad deeds bring bad results, your own deeds bring your own results. However, all these are considered about the religious, and we can also see the uh, figure in below, that is the ancient Chinese type. That is uh, consists of considering that all everything in the world is uh, made up of the five elements, and for these five elements, they are causes and the effects of each other. Actually, for the scientific view of the cause of disease, Hippocrates is um, the Greek Greek physician of the fifth century classified the cause of disease into those concerned with the seasons, climate, and external conditions, and those more personal causes such as irregular food, exercise, and habits of the individuals. So all of these are very simple and a simple view of the cause of disease in the ancient time. The first understanding of the cause of disease came from the modern time, is from studying the effective disease in the population. Once upon the that disease have a specific causes collected agent, and in 1882, when the microscope was invented, it enables the scientists to find the pathogens. And in the same year, Robert Koch produced a set of criteria for the determination of whether an infectious agent is the cause of disease. Koch's postulates had a great impact on the development of etiology theory, especially during the early years of epidemiology, when interest was focused on the acute infectious disease. The application of this postulate helped people identify the relationship between an agent and the disease. The logic model is helpful even today when looking at this on infectious disease, such as Lillinia's disease and AIDS. The figure on the right side shows trace the investigation of the etiology of Lillinia's disease and the summarized Koch postulates. Lillinia's disease was first recognized in the July 1976. It was more than six months later before the Koch uh, prostitute was fulfilled and uh, pneumophilia was pronounced uh, the etiological agent of the, this disease. First, if the etiology agent were biological, then the agent has to be found to be regularly associated with the disease. Tissues from the lung biopsies and the sputum samples were examined for a recurring microorganism. A grand negative rod with a tendency to uh, form lung fluting filament was consistently detected in the specimens. 
definite. The new distance of the bacteria was isolated in pure culture in the fabric. This necessitated investigating this remote area. This uh, nutritional requirement and the design special growth media that would meet these narrow requirements for bacteria growth. Third, a suspicious uh, uh, animal was needed to demonstrate that this uh, hemophilia could produce disease, particularly uh, respiratory disease, similar to Legionnaire's disease in the humans. The junior pig was that animal. So after all, this hemophilia was recover recovered from the uninfected guinea pig for field of first positivity. So all of this showed that uh, cost uh, cost to date was very suitable even so in today's life when we uh, are detecting the uh, causes of infectious disease. However, nowadays, for most of the years, especially the non-clinical chronic disease, cause or causes cannot be established, uh, established simply by Cox uh, criteria. Few diseases are so simple that there is a single cause. A given disease can be caused by more than one cause nexus mechanism, and every cause mechanism involves the joint interaction of a multitude of component causes. Later, the theory of multifactor causation was uh, uh, proposed that disease is associated with many factors, such as the host, the environment, the behavior, and the psychological and social factors. Probability was uh, applied to this theory. For example, smoking might be the cause of lung cancer, coronary, coronary heart disease, as well as other diseases, but heart disease is associated with uh, multiple factors or causes. The concept of uh, multiple causes is also true for infection disease. When we talk about the cause of cholera, the first idea is a common bacillus. However, not all of the persons who contact with the bacillus and become enemies. Here we see that the organism is a necessary cause for disease to occur, but not necessarily a sufficient cause. Not everyone who has the uh, uh, touched for the uh, HIV virus will develop a for uh, for case of AIDS. So later on, William period find the cause of disease, and uh, we will call, uh, talk about in the next slide. So, Lillian Field has defined the cause of disease as a causal uh, relation would be personalized to exist whenever the evidence indicates that the factors form part of the complex of the circumstances that increases the probability of the occurrence of the disease, and that a delineation of one or more of these factors increases the frequency of In another definition by McMahon, the causal co 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 association may useful be defined as an association between categories or events or characteristics in which an alteration in the frequency or quality of one category is followed by a change in the other. From this slide, we will talk about the different modes of the causations. The first we will talk about is the triangle modes also called the triangle of epidemiology, which holds that the occurrence of disease is the result of the combination of the host, the environment, and the pathogens. Under more normal circumstances, people present a healthy state through the interaction of these three elements to maintain a dynamic balance. Once one element changes and exceeds what the triangle balance can maintain, the balance is destroyed, and the people will suffer from the disease. This mode considers the three factors of food mobility, but it is difficult to explain chronic and non-communicable disease due to the absence of a specific etiology. So actually, there are several types of agents that was, can be mentioned in the triangle of epidemiology, such as the nutrients, the poisons, the allergens, the radiation, and some of the physical trauma, microbes, or even the psychological express, expressions could be considered as an agent in the triangle of epidemiology. And next, what are the host factors? We know that host factors are mainly consisted of those within the humans. And what are the factors associated with humans? We know that it will include the genetic endowment, the immunological state, and we will consider about the age of the us and the personal uh, behavior of the human. 
which will also the host effect. The last is about the environment factors, such as the factors seem to be crowding in the environment, the atmosphere around us, and the mode of communications, such as the phenomena in the uh, environment that will bring host and agent together. For example, some of the vectors, some vehicles, and the receivers. The second mode is the real mode. The real mode emphasizes the close relationship between the host and the environment. The host occupies the position of the real axis, in which the genetic material plays an important role. The, the peripheral will represent the environment, which includes the biological, physical, chemical, and social environment. The organism lives in the environment, while the disease exists in the organism and the environment. The parts of the real mode constructs are flexible and may vary in size with different diseases. The next model is the non-communicable disease model, in which the tumor's genetic endowment persists as the core of the disease, the cause of the disease, while the personality, beliefs, and the behavior choices something around the personnel. And uh, other factors such as the environmental factors, the air pollution, some of the social determinants of health such as the economic and the health system, uh, and uh, such as factors like uh, uh, water quality, could be considered as very external uh, factors. So all of these external factors may influence the personal and the behavior choice uh, as well as the human's belief and interact with the genetic endowment to uh, cause the disease. The, fi the final uh, mode is the web of causation mode. And uh, it, in this web of causation mode, in the multiple etiology series holds that the disease occurs as a result of the combination of the actions of various factors, which can act independently or synergize or antinergize each other. Factors can cause and affect each other, leading to the diversity of disease occurrence while different pathogen factors and disease are connected in different ways, that is, multiple chains of collisions are interlinked to form a web of collision. The web of collision mode can provide a complete path of collision. The advantage of this mode is its uh, clear and specific expression. It is highly systemic, and it provides a good description of complex collision. For example, when we see this causal model of risk factors for cardiovascular disease, we have the microenvironmental factors such as the social economic status and the work environment, which will definitely influence our behavior risk factors such as cigarette smoking, dietary pattern, and exercise. On the other side, the genetic factors may also influence these biological risk factors such as hypertension and blood lipids. And these biological risk factors Will have a direct influence on the risk of stroke and myocardial infection. From this slide, we will talk about different uh, types of causes. Several types of causes can be distinguished according to the last di uh, dictionary of epidemiology. A cause is termed necessary when it must always precede the effect, also, the effect needs not to be, to be the sole result of the cause. A cause is termed as sufficient when it inevitably in initiate or produce an effect. In reality, any given cause may be necessary, sufficient, uh, neither or both. Many factors uh, that contribute to disease occurrence are neither uh, necessary nor sufficient. For example, under the definition of the cause purposes proposed here, if someone is uh, suffering from clinical tuberculosis, there may be many causes. These causes might include the characteristics of uh, micro, uh, microbials, tuber tuberculosis strains, the number of infection bacteria, the environment of dry air, the extent of small droplets, neglect containing uh, microbacterium, tuberculosis, and the number of patients' characteristics, including genetic suspicions, deeply immune status, living conditions, and social and economic status. Accessing to uh, preventive treatment for latent infection and so forth. The consolidation of uh, causes required for these patients to develop a clinical tuberculosis at this time can be deplicit with the sufficient cause, while the sufficient cause refers to a complete causal mechanism 
a minimal set of conditions, uh, events that are sufficient for the outcome to occur. Minimum here implies that all the conditions or events are necessary. For example, let's take this circle in the figure, comparison the three and the segment, which are the specifically represent a causal component that might, must be uh, presented or has occurred for the person to de develop the tuberculosis. There are listed components such as in the infection, this is one of the causes, the immunity status, this is another cause, and uh, there are also several other causes that are unknown. So by all these components of the sufficient uh, by combining all these components, the cause is a sufficient cause. However, in the predicts of the epidemiology, the necessary cause and sufficient cause are not that easy to consider. In developing uh, public health programs, knowing that uh, exposure to a particular pollutant increases the probability of the uh, developing disease is important. Unless the pollutant is absolutely causative, this information does not necessarily tell us the outcome for a particular patient. We may not know why some, uh, one person exposed to the pollutant does not appear ill, while overall the rate of illness is, uh, in the persons exposed is increased significantly. For example, how do epidemiologists deal with the question of whether cigarette smoking causes lung cancer when there is evidence that some people smoke their entire life and do not develop lung cancer, while others who have never smoked actually develop lung cancer. There are several combinations of the necessary cause and the sufficient cause. See here the, in the first figure it is the cause that is necessary and sufficient, while in the second figure the cause is necessary but not sufficient for each of the factors, while in the third figure these uh, factors are sufficient but are not necessary. While in the fourth figure, all the, the, these factors are both neither sufficient nor necessary. If we consider about a circle or pie model of this cause of the disease, uh, each applied the basic uh, sufficient cause model, which represents the certain causal uh, mechanisms. Here, the letters A, B, and C, and so on, represent uh, uh, represent, respectively represent the different uh, event factors. The left side figure shows a uh, certain disease has sufficient causes containing components about using A, B, C, and uh, U as an unknown factor. That is, when A, B, and C exist in a certain person, the disease will inevitably occur. Of course, the unknown factors must also be considered. In the same way, the second and the third uh, figure shows the other sufficient causes. Each cause is necessary and sufficient to uh, produce the effect, particularly when the disease is an uh, observable action or event that takes place near in time to the event. If any of the component causes appear in every sufficient cause, then that component cause is called a necessary component cause. The term necessary cause is therefore reserved for a component uh, cause under the sufficient cause model. Factor A appears in all these three sufficient cause models, and therefore this factor A is a necessary cause. So, in a word, any factors that uh, appears in at least one sufficient cause model is called a component cause, and any component cause that appear in all sufficient models is a necessary cause. So each uh, sufficient cause has an independent effect on the occurrence of the disease in a population. And so, for example, in communicable disease, this may include the biological agent as well as environmental conditions, such as for the tuberculosis, for the missile, etc. While in non-communicable disease, this may include a whole range of genetic, environmental, as well as personnel, psychological, behavioral characteristics such as when we consider about the disease as diabetes and cancer. There are also some other types of the disease cause models, such as the BEANS model, which means the preventable causes of the disease. The BEAN means the biological factors and the behavior factors. E means about the environmental factors. E I means the immunological factors. N means the nutritional factors. G means the genetic factors, while S means the service, social determinants, and the spiritual factors. The causal relationship 
can be also uh, divided into two pipes according to whether it's a direct or indirect uh, cause. For direct causal effect, we can see that the factors will have a direct, direct effect on the disease. While in the indirect effect, we can see that effect 1 will first influence the effect 2, and the next influence effect 3, and the next step is effect 4, and finally is the disease. So in the indirect uh, causal effect, then in this model, there will be several spe steps for the effect 1 to be influencing the disease outcome. Let's uh, take a look at the example of this uh, direct and indirect causal effect. The first example is about the direct effect of the causal model, which is from the genetic factor that in the data F508 polymorphism, which will influence the risk of cystic fibrosis directly. While in the indirect uh, causal model, we have the uh, example of myocardial infection, in which the initial uh, factor that influence uh, the, as a cause of disease is the high cholesterol. And when this cause will uh, increase the risk of the artery sickness, and later on, some of the hemostatic factors, which will influence also the plated status. And finally, we will increase the risk of the myocardial infection. When we here talk about the causes of the disease, there are several concepts that were similar to the cause, the concept of cause for the disease, such as the concept of exposure, the concept of risk factor and the protective factor. These can be also considered as a cause. For example, in for the hypertension, there are several risk factors, such as salt, family history, a type A type person, uh, alcohol, dyslipidia, and overweight. Well, also there are also some of the protective factors for the hypertension, such as food, sport, control weight, and physical examination. A factor, a risk factor, is actually preferred to term as a cause. A risk factor is an attribute or exposure associated with an increased risk of disease or other specific outcomes, such as the genetic factors, the environmental exposure, the aspect of the personal lifestyle, and all some social characteristics. A risk factors may be a cause of disease, but it may also be a non-causal characteristic that associated with a disease. So, actually, in many of the association analysis in epidemiology, we prefer to call many things as a risk factor, while not the cause of the disease, because causal inference that will be illustrated later is very complicated process. And uh, when we call it something as a risk factor, it will not be that much criteria for a risk factor.